The AI Wilco project's quite unusual for a zinc deposit because we've got um, we've got the zinc uh, sulfide body, and then underneath the zinc sulfide, we've got tin millisation. Mm. It's separate, and uh, and we've got 10 million tons that are around one percent tin in resources. Welcome to Assay TV. We're with Tinker Resources. I'm with Graham Carmen, MD and CEO of the company. Graham, thanks very much for taking a moment out of this busy event to come and chat with us. Lovely to be here, Adam. Thanks very much. Yeah. So look, let's let's delve into the zinc market and get some ideas on sort of what's been going on there and the, some of the dynamics before we then focus in on what's going on with Tinker. Well, zinc is at a um, a bit of a ride up up and down. Um, it's it's currently trading a dollar thirty a pound. It got up to two dollars a pound not not that long ago. Um, interestingly, though, the the um, the inventory is very low. It's at five year lows. Um, a lot of the people in the in the space think that zinc is going to have another big run. Um, why the supply is dropping off because of closures of um, smelters, particularly in Europe, mm. right due to the Ukraine war and uh, due to the high uh, energy prices. Mm -hmm. So we've had shuttering of smelters and that's forced a, a shortage of zinc mm -hmm. around the world. Plus there's been reductions of um, zinc production at various mines around the world. So actually we're hitting a very interesting time um, in, the, in the zinc space with you know shortages of supply, mm -hmm. demand still strong. Uh, we get obviously uh, zinc's use and is galvanizing uh, of steel. Mm -hmm. um, I found out fairly recently that about 20 tons of zinc goes into one of those wind turbines. So, yeah. So it's it's a, it's an interesting um, market for zinc right now. Certainly, the energy transition thematic is sucking <laughs> all kinds of critical minerals and metals totally. uh, in. Totally. Would, would it be fair to say that there's not quite a lot of quality zinc projects or assets out there as well, exasperating the supply? Well, true. Um, there aren't too many uh, good good quality projects out there. You know the the old mines uh, uh, are running out of ore, or the grades are dropping. Mm. Uh, there's going to be some, need to be some new developments uh, on in, in the zinc space to kind of fill the void. Mm. Yep, a la Tinker. So let's talk then about uh, your projects <laughs> leading into Tinker. Of course. Yeah, um, let's talk about a, a, a Wilco and some of the drill results that you've put out lately. Can you, um, if you can't, put so those off the top of your head, or talk about what what you've been up to there? So um, Tinker's got a the A. Wilka zinc project in Peru, mm -hmm. we've got 20 million tons at around 7% zinc, 7.2, I think, in the indicated category, and 40, 40, 45 million tons of zinc at about 6% zinc in the inferred category. Mm -hmm. We're currently carrying out a 10,000 meter drill program. We've got, we've got two rigs turning. Uh, we've just put out some results earlier this week. Uh, one of the holes hit. 45 meters at 12 percent zinc, one of the best holes we've, we've ever had mm. uh, at the west zone. Uh, we've got a rig at the west zone, a rig at the south zone. Um, we're going to have, um, so we've only put out about 3,000 meters of drilling so far. So there's a lot more uh, dr drill holes to come in. Mm -hmm. Now the purpose of the of the drilling is to improve the the uh, the resource, get it as big as we can get it. Mm. We're doing some infield drilling, but uh, there's also some really important step outs that we're, we're, we're carrying, carrying on with, and that uh, information is going to be used towards a future uh, pre-feasibility study that we're going to start sometime in, you know, in the next 12, 12 months or so. We haven't formally kicked that off, but, uh, but anyway, we've, uh, we, we, the geos are very excited up at the, up at the camp, um, drilling away and uh, hitting some, some really nice mineralization. Yep, excellent. So the work program for next year, or then this year and into next year, then is really spreading that out, seeing how far this resource goes before you can make a firm estimate. That's right. So the, the drilling will continue for as long as, as it as it needs to, mm -hmm. to to get the resource as as robust and large as as we possibly can. But we're also fo uh, focusing on the high grade. So um, you know we've got about seven thousand, eight thousand meters to drill. It could be ex expanded beyond that. Subject. To results, mm -hmm. but we're going to be drilling well into uh, next year, uh, and, a, and then followed by a resource update. Yep, excellent. Yeah. Um, also, within the portfolio, you've got some tin deposits as well. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us an update of what's going on there? And 
uh, the the AI World Cup project is quite unusual for a zinc deposit because we've got um, we've got the zinc uh, sulfide body, and then underneath the zinc sulfide, we've got ten millisation. Mm. It's a separate, and uh, and we've got ten million tons that are around one percent tin in mm. resources. So we're we're looking very closely at um, at uh, incorporating the tin into uh, the mining studies going forward. Mm. We did a PEA in 2021, at the end of 2021, um, on the zinc. Yep. And we did not include the tin. Right, okay. So uh, we're very keen to incorporate the tin into the next economic study that we do. Mm. Um, it's a smaller deposit. It's open in all directions. But it's also very high grade. Like 1% tin is, uh, you know, like 3 to 4% copper equivalent or around about 10% zinc equivalent. Mm. So it's really good grade. Um, and um, we're doing work on a, on the metallurgical. Uh, we're doing metallurgical work at the moment. Um, we're going to be announcing the results of those of those studies uh, very very soon. Yep, excellent. And the tin market, you know, perhaps even more strange than uh, zinc. Even well, well, it is. Uh, and and tin really is one of these commodities uh, that's critical in the in the green energy uh, space. Yep. Um, you know, on the solar panels that you have, there's the there's a metal bar that goes across the bottom of those solar panels. Mm-hmm. And that's pure tin, uh, and so the, the um, and also tin is used as a solder in, in all yep. electrical circuits. It's the main stuff that gets melted up and yep. joins those little wires and together. Right well, yeah. That's right, and the, cut, and the conductors. So tin is, is crucial for the um, for the uh, you know for the the green energy space, and uh, good tin projects are as rare as hen's teeth. Mm. Um, they, they don't they don't they're not many good tin projects out there. So, you know, tin as it by complete chance we've got tin in, the, in our name, but uh, yeah. it wasn't designed that way. But um, but there we go. Yeah, very fitting. Excellent. Very you know, fitting, yeah. And this, you know, zooming out and talking about Peru in general, you know, this is probably why you're there because of the the, mm. the geology is is renowned, you know, the world over, the amount of resources there are in Peru. But talk about the uh, environment a little bit, uh, the mining environment as well, and uh, what's going on in uh, Peru as a region in terms of right. um, supporting uh, mining projects. Well, it is elephant country, right? There's so many big deposits down there, and that you're right, that is the reason we're there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, the, it's the world's second largest copper producer, the world's second largest zinc producer, I think it's third uh, silver producer, third or fourth tin producer. Um, so a number of commodities um, get mined out out of Peru, as, as I'm sure we all know. Um, and uh, you know, I guess from the political side, uh, there's a government that was elected 18 months ago. You know, when when they got elected on a, on a kind of a communist ticket, mm-hmm. they I think reality hit, and they realised mining's too important to the economy. Mm-hmm. Um, so the mining is continuing more or less as as it as it has for the last 20, 30 years. Um, you know things are things are going along quite smoothly on on the mining side. Um, you know there there are a few little hot hot points here or there, hot spots. Uh, of, of, you hear of projects not going quite so well. We're very fortunate that we're in central Peru. Um, we've got very good infrastructure. We've got supportive communities and. Uh, and and essentially we we you know we're we're going well uh, at A Walker. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, what about the capital structure and then the financings of the company at the moment? Um, are you funded for this drilling uh, that you're going to be carrying out into next year as well? So Tink has got uh, thirteen million Canadian dollars in the kitty. Uh, we're fully funded for the next 12, 18 months to get through this drill program and the studies we've got planned in twenty twenty three. Uh, the capital structure is around 390 million shares. Um, the market cap's 65, 60, 70 million Canadian. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're listed on the TSXV. Um, no debt. Um, uh, it's a clean, clean company with with a fantastic project. Of course, we're heavily undervalued. And we're uh, the PEA uh, that we did 2021 suggested that the project you know is is valued at 400 million plus US. Yep. Post tax and and yet our you know we're valued at about 0.1 nav so uh, there's a heck of a lot of value uh, that we believe that we can add to the project um, with the drill programs with the work that we're doing de-risking the project um, we've got two very important strategic investors um, which 
which I'll mention if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. We've got Buena Ventura, um, one of Peru's largest independent mining yeah. companies, is a 19% shareholder. And we have Nexa Resources. Nexa is the fourth largest zinc producer in the world, mm. the largest zinc producer in Latin America, mm. also at 19%. Um, we have a, um, the Sentient Private Equity, also at about 17, 18%. Uh, we have um, Commodity Discovery Fund and, pl and some other uh, institutional funds on our register. So we've got about 70, 75% institutional uh, shareholding that's, uh, you know, very tight mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't trade. Mm. So uh, we've, got a, we've got a solid shareholding base. You know, there's, um, you know, cash, um, a lot of news flow mm. these next few months. So exciting times. Yeah, looking forward to those catalysts. Just on the point of having major miners on share register as well, do they are they bringing some expertise and some sort of powers to bear as well as just the capital? No, that's a good point, Adam. Um, for sure, they bring the the engineering experience. Uh, we've got a great team of, of exploration geologists yep. at Tinker, mm. uh, led by myself, of course. Um, but uh, the engineering guys, uh, you know, th those guys provide a lot of support on that side. Yep. We have a technical committee uh, that we meet uh, on a kind of quarterly basis to discuss results, to talk about you know the next challenges and and, and work programs. So, they're very very supportive shareholders. Yep, excellent, very good. All right, well, Graham, thanks very much for giving us a rundown of the projects, the situation. Uh, sounds like everything's pointing in the right direction. So mm -hmm. we look forward to catching up on how that goes next year. Thanks a lot, Adam. Thank thanks you. a lot for your time. Cheers. Good.